In this lecture, I wanted to quickly go over the idea of why do we need APIs, from where this idea came and what are we trying to do. I'm trying to give you a very, very simple but realistic example of how this evolved. The idea is as follows. Practically, when we're talking about APIs, we cannot talk about programming and programs. Let's say that I'm trying here to write a program, and this is in JavaScript, and say that I'm working at an invoicing program that is supposed to generate invoices. Now, typically, when we're working at programs, we also need to interact with different kind of information. So, for example, on one side, I may need to get some information from a database. And the information that I'm trying to get is a resource or so-called an object. Well, I will need for the invoice, the customer name, the customer address, maybe information about the products that the customer has bought. This kind of information is typically stored in a database. Now, at the same time in my program, I'll have to do some computations. Maybe, you know, I have to calculate the tax and that's different for each product that the customer has bought. There's like an entire way how you can calculate this. So we're also interested in like functions or actions. We're trying to compute something. So let me give you a simple example of program or a function in a program calling another function that does something. This is a simple project in a language called JavaScript. The program does the following. It has defined one function, it's simply called run. And what this function does, it calls another function called add, and it gives two parameters. And what this function is trying to do is to add two numbers. As I said, it's a very, very simple example. What's happening is that this other function, add, is also in the same program. What it does, it takes two parameters, a and b, and it will return the result of adding a and b. What's happening in this variable result, we are capturing the result of adding two numbers, and then finally, we are writing it here in the log. So practically, the program will display this information. Let me show you how this works, and we're going to execute this program. And don't worry if you're not doing it on your own computer. It's just simply okay to watch and try to understand how this is supposed to work. So you see here the result is 5. So I added 1 and 4. Of course, the result is 5. Now say I need to add 1 and 6. I can run the same program and the result is 7. Pretty, pretty simple. Again, just to recap, I have your function. This is like the main program that we're trying to, to build something, generate the invoice, and then I need to call other functions to do things for me, like adding numbers or calculating the tax and things like that. The concept is I have everything running on the same program on my computer or on a server. So everything is locally. There's nothing. All the information that we need is there available. So going back here to the diagram, let's say the following happens. If we need to get data from the database, as I said, the customer name and address. For my JavaScript program, I have the option of simply establishing a database connection. Practically, using JavaScript, I'm connecting to the database, I'm doing some queries there, and I'm getting some data for the invoice. When it comes to the information that I need for the invoice to be correctly, to have the right calculations, I also need to rely on some function. It may be that someone else or other systems already have the calculation that I need. And of course, I can go and replicate the same functionality, but it may be that this functionality is really, really complex. It's not just about adding two numbers, but there's like, maybe there have been like years put into the writing of the code that would compute this information. So let's say it's really, really complex and we're trying to get this as soon as possible up and running. We have the problem that this is not the same language that we're using. So this is not something that we can easily import, as you saw, calling another function. This is written in a different programming language. This is C++. Our application is in JavaScript. Moreover, this is a totally different system that has nothing to do with us. It's running on a different server. Our program is supposed to run on another server, maybe totally different departments within our organization that, that handle this. In this case, the idea is to make a so-called remote procedure call, RPC. It is practically calling a function that is not on the same computer. As I would here call the function add, but call it on a totally different server. And I have an example for that as well for you. 
So let's open up here the second script. Essentially, you'll notice that it's not much different. We still have here a function called run. So this is like where our program starts doing something. And now instead of calling add, I'm calling this make RPC call. I'm providing two parameters. And when we're looking at this, here above you see that things have gotten a bit more complicated. It's not longer so simple. And I have another function. It's indeed making this RPC call. It's making this remote call. I have here a service that is able to add two numbers. So just to give you an idea, this is still something that's running over HTTP. I can simply copy this and open it in a browser. So if we go in a browser, paste this address here, you will see that the last part of it has an expression. It says like one plus five. So we can provide here a parameter and the response from the server will be the result of adding the numbers, one and eight in this case. So this is the remote part. This is exactly what we're trying to do in the code itself. It doesn't really matter if it looks a bit complicated. It's important that you get the idea. This program that I have, this second script, does not do the adding of the two numbers. It calls another service, it makes this remote procedure call, remote function call. It calls the add function, but on a totally different server with another programming language. We don't even care what is the programming language if the server is running Windows or Linux or anything like that. We're just delegating this job to another server. So practically, we are building here this request. And it's totally fine if you don't understand what's happening here. The server is answering and then we get the result back. So let me show you how this works. So this is the second script that we're running. You'll see here that I'm creating the expression one plus five and then the result is six. If I input other parameters, the result will be the respective result that is expected. Everything happens no longer locally. Part of the program is running locally where I'm displaying this logs, this, this information here, the result. This is still happening locally, but adding the numbers, this is no longer happening locally. So this is the big difference that I want you to get. So in essence, the idea that we can call a function that is running on a different machine, on a different server, has been like the start of what we call today APIs. Now, of course, over time, we have noticed that it is not such a good idea to leave a lot of programs directly calling the database or to have so many functions or maybe a lot of other systems that here in the background. With API, we kind of look like a unified way of trying to get data that is either about resources or objects. So practically what we call like a regular data, but also the kind of actions or the kind of functions. So we mentioned this invoicing system that needs to calculate the tax, but just as well, an action can be when you click on your phone to turn off your light and you know, the, the light has also an API and through you, that action, you're practically turning off the light. This is why we're talking also about resources, but also about actions. There's the kind of information that you will typically get through an API. The idea, everything here happens over a network. Your application, your phone, whatever you have is using the network, typically the internet or similar networks, either to get data or to send a command or to make a computation and to get back some results. So that's how we defined APIs today. What I want you to take from this lecture is simply this idea of having a program that doesn't do the entire work. And it kind of delegates or gets data from different sources in order to build a new functionality.